The worst is far from over, and we could be facing a depression in 2010, according to my guest today, Gerald Salente. He's a director of the Trends Research Institute. Uh, Gerald, we were talking another segment. You don't think the economic problems are behind us by any stretch of the imagination. We're talking about the huge debt levels we're piling up here. What is that going to mean for the average American in terms of our quality of life and whether we're going to have any quality of life going forward from here? Look at the real numbers. Median household income is below 1999 levels by what? About $2,000 plus. It's only going to get worse. This is a time as we see it really to, to instill that Yankee ingenuity, that can-do spirit. So really starting to look at, you know, maybe becoming a little more frugal. What is it? Over 70% of our GDP is consumer-based. Right. You have to start cutting back on this. Again, it's a time for a re retrenchment. It doesn't mean the world comes to an end. As we see it, the businesses that are going to prosper during these times are the ones that are going to understand quality. Average isn't going to make it. Everybody heading for that lower end, there's no profit margin in that. The commodity priced items, commodity priced sales. There's enough quality demand out there to start heading into those directions. So, but on the other level, the more personal levels, you know, what happens? Well, you know, maybe it's a time to think in survival skills. Right. So when you say that, you're not speaking metaphorically. You're talking about growing your own food. I mean, are we going to be, do you see us, you know, going back to a hunter-gatherer type society? And I don't mean to be overly dramatic when I say that. Well, not hunter-gatherer, but, I mean, look at these lawns that are people growing, that, you know, perfectly manicured with grass that you can't eat or right. smoke. I mean, right. stuff is worthless. <laughs> so why not rip it up and, and plant a wonderful garden and start appreciating the flavors of that? I mean, everybody likes great flavors. I'm right. Italian. I mean, right. I know, you know what good food is. And it's not the stuff that, you know. The mass market stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know. So really, so what do, and then what are you doing by that? You're raising a family and then sh teaching them what it's about. Maybe making your, putting up your own preserves over the year. This isn't, you know, this isn't rocket science. This is as old as civilization. So, yeah, going back to those kind of things, back to basics, using what you have to make it better, getting off the grid as much as you can, and new technologies are making that more and more possible. Now, when you say getting off the grid, you're talking about, you know, some people create their own energy, and some people pay taxes. I mean, there's all different ways you can get off the grid. I mean, what, what, are, you, what are you suggesting? Well, the, the, you mean the not way to pay taxes to have an offshore corporation, but they can't No, not that now. way. No, no. <laughs> No, the, what does it mean? It means trying to use as little as you can. So, for example, you know, my father may so rest in peace. There were seven of us in my family. And he used to say all the time, shut the lights off. What do you think, I have a pull with Edison? <laughs> you know, so you become right. more conscious of the things that you're doing. You don't waste. Waste not, want not, use it up, wear it out, make it do, do without. It's really survival mode. So... My father used to say, you know, money doesn't go on trees. So I, I hear where you're coming from. But, but there, there's a difference between frugality, and a lot of Americans are already cutting back, and the Depression, you know, when Hoovervilles and bread lines and things like that. I mean, the 70s, you know, we turned the thermostats down, so we put on sweaters. Is, are we going back to that, or are we going back to the 1930s? combination of both of them. <clears throat> you're seeing it already with these 10 cities. They don't make a lot of the news. They're out there. Right. Every now and then you see these stories about who's living under these aqueducts and on and on and on and on. Look at the foreclosure rates. Where are these people going to go? What are they going to do? Yeah, it's going to increase. It's only going to get worse. But we see that changing because necessity is the mother of invention. Again, look at the trends. You have guys and women getting out of high, uh, college, great degrees, really smart, and they can't find a job. Right. They're not going to go under. This is the survival mentality. That's when the new inventive and creativeness happens. This is the group that starts making it happen. At a lot of different levels, by the way. Again, taking it into the other realms, you look at it politically. You think they're happy about having $50,000 worth of debt, no job, and seeing bonuses, three companies splitting up $50 billion. So now you start seeing different political movements taking place, different activism levels. So that's the way we look at things. All right, Jeff. Thanks very much. Thank you.